I'm CT. When I'm not hosting podcasts, I live in the real world. I mean, everybody has to have a job, right? Mine just happens to be CS, customer service. You know, solutions, relationships, keeping your team motivated to keep in constant contact with every single person who has chosen to step into your store. Episode number 83, Lost Car, Security Checkout, and the Mysterious Blue Van. This is CTCS. Transition walk, day number one out of four. Brand new week, huh? Oof. Oof. 55 degrees. It's been raining for two days. The mindset is just everywhere, but where it needs to be. I was reading up on that today. Before I go into customer service today, I need to understand that on cloudy, rainy days, your melatonin... On cloudy, rainy days, your serotonin is down, and you've got to do things to get it back up. And one of them is doing exactly what we're doing. We're on a transition walk. In a matter of moments, I'm going to be in front of people in a well-lit store. I'm telling you, when I say well-lit, it's always 12 o'clock high noon there. See it, see us. Oh, yeah. Listen to the click and the clack of the windshield wipers. The rain is coming down in a very huge way. Uh, praying for the, the baggers today. No matter what, rain, sleet, or snow, they've got to be on the go. And uh, I do feel for them. And uh, there might be a couple of times where all of us on the team take a shot at going outside to uh, to pick up the, the carts. Because, I mean, it's, it's just not fair to throw somebody in there right away uh, that is a bagger. I wish I knew the real story. How does somebody buy grilled chicken and milk at 11 o'clock in the morning and by 5 after 1, they drive across town to get their money back? What happens in a person's life where you suddenly decide, ah, I think I overspent? Because we have to throw the chicken away, and because it is a milk product, we have to throw that away as well. So we lost money on that. We're outside. We got a situation. We have a guest that can't find their car. We're going to walk the parking lot. I mean, she's pretty, pretty injured. I mean, she thinks somebody has stolen her car. So we're going to uh, walk it with her, with the fob, the key fob, and see uh, what, what the situation is here. Here's an update on the situation. It's coming down really hard out here. And uh, we still can't find the car. We're drenched. There's a total of four people on this right now, including our, our manager on duty. And we're trying to figure out exactly where her car is. We've been up and down every aisle. Uh, please don't let this be a stolen vehicle. About 35 minutes was spent searching the parking lot, walking around with a key fob, trying to figure out where her car was. And then all of a sudden she realized, wait a second. Wait, wait, wait a second. I didn't drive that car. I, I drove a different car here. So we've been outside in the rain, and we're sopping wet. We're trying to warm up now in a, in a cold grocery store. But that's she didn't. She thought she had a different car. So that's that's got to be a first for us here. Hallelujah! We finally got Apple Pay and Tap on on our registers. Hallelujah! That is going to cut into how many things I've always got to put back because people just get up and leave. So we finally have it. What an amazing moment! Right in front of my fucking eyes, it happened. We, we knew that they were going to steal it. We knew that they were going to take that full basket, but we expected them to run. But this is the way that they did it. This is the way that, that these thieves are doing this. They go up to the self-checkout. They do go chink, 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 chink. They get $277 worth of merchandise. And then the woman walks outside, and she says, I'm going to go get the credit card. The guy's sitting there with his own credit card, working it. And then all of a sudden, the guy just walks out. I say, no, you can't go. I'm going to do whatever, whatever the hell I want to do. And he just walks out. And I ask for security. Security doesn't even chase the guy down. He just lets him go. You know, it, 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 it's stuff like this that gets underneath your nails and it just poisons your soul. We've got another theft in progress right now, two young gentlemen. And what was really interesting is that one of them came up to our bagger and said, I need to talk with you. And the guy looked at me and he goes, I'm going to talk to him, okay? And then uh, next thing you know, the two of them, our bagger and the guy, are over in HBC and they're having a conversation. They go and they get a cart and now they're in the store acting very suspicious. Two of them in a row like this, they travel in groups. And when you start filling up that cart, things begin to happen. So we've got a department manager on it right now to figure out what's going on. As for security, not helping us at all. Transition walk, day number two out of four. God almighty, I need this walk through this forest in a huge way. It's been it's been a big morning for the podcasting. I was with Bob Crawford from the Avett Brothers, Emily Hampshire, who uh, you might know from Shit's Creek. She's got a brand new movie out. And I also spent some time with the three hosts of a new show that's on the Peacock, which is uh, about the de- Swedish death cleaning. So... 
lot, lots of conversation. That podcaster versus the guy in the CS. Not the same person. That's why we transition walk. And I invite people to do that. I really do. Look at your life and see where your transitions are and learn from them. So you can be strong all day and not just in your favorite moments. Walking into the store. Man, I was doing some heavy duty research today. And uh, and I apologize if uh, my reactions to the theft yesterday got a little out of hand. But I was doing research today. And because I want to know why I am so emotionally involved when we keep catching these people. And you want to know what research showed? It's because you no longer trust because it affects the people that I'm with because it affects my trust level. When people steal from you, all of a sudden, your trust has been broken. Now who do we trust? The next person? Oh, they could be a stealer too. The typical Friday afternoon rush, people are rushing into the store because they want to rush into their weekend, and uh, finally it stopped raining. It's been raining for like uh, three and a half days in a row, so uh, they're, they're ready to get on with their life. And one of the things that I've, I've run into, you can tell that gas prices are high, and so are food prices still. And I, I ask them, I say, what, what do you got planned for the weekend? Nothing. That's what I keep hearing. Nothing. So what would be the reason why they rush in? Oh, I get it. I get it. They rush in so they can hurry up and get home to do nothing. There's rumors about you, man. Oh, God. What? Yeah, lots of talk. But what is it? It's gotten back to me that you don't like your voice on CTCS. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan. Yeah, you know why? I know. you're using your real voice. It's not your radio voice. Maybe. Maybe Maybe we should call you like Radio Guy Bill. Every time we talk, you have to talk like this. Uh, on your own without talk, CT. Oh, welcome to CTCS. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm good. Um, I, you know, I think most people have that problem, right? Oh, yeah. Like, don't you? 43 years of radio and I still hate my voice. Yeah, man, but I, I like CTCS, so, you know, it's like I enjoy listening. Wow, I finally got an endorsement. Yeah. Wow. I got to go sit down on this. Yeah, take a break, man. Take five. Very interesting situation underway right now. A blue minivan that's been out here since 7 o'clock this morning. And uh, the guy has been sitting in it the entire time. Uh, a car was was hijacked uh, pretty much earlier today. And they're trying to figure out, you know, what, what's up with this blue minivan. If, you know, in fact, I'm looking at the van itself right now. It's kind of a beat up old van. And they're wondering if maybe the person is just looking for certain cars. And then he makes the phone call of, uh, hey, look, uh, go pick up that one, that new Kia or whatever. So we're going to keep you posted on this one. Something's up with the blue van. We're getting an update on the blue van. Still sitting there. Still sitting there, yeah. And you tend to You've been there seven hours. I mean, and then, and then here comes the guy that steals with his mother. Oh, this is going to be a great day. Oh, yep, yep. Then Leroy. Here comes, here comes Leroy. So, yep. All right. So that's, that's going to be our Friday for us. New guy, Bill, uh, called security for the shopping center. What did they say? Uh, he basically asked me where the guy was, what the description. He said, you want me to tell him to leave? And I said, that's up to you. So I said, I don't know what the rules are. I said, but the guy's been here for at least nine or 10 hours today. I was like, he's just sitting in his van. Uh, it, I don't know what the hell he's doing, but no one should be sitting in a shopping center for nine hours with the window down, looking around. I don't know if he's looking to abduct the kid, a woman. Mm. Uh, you know, we had a car stolen today. I don't know if he's spotting for those people and going, hey, this is the car we're still in. Somebody just pulled it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, so you know, he needs to move along. Leroy came into the store with his mother. Uh, what you may have heard of uh, old stories of Leroy on CTCS because he was banned from the store for just consecutive amounts of, of shoplifting. But he was in the store with his mother and his mother comes up to uh, customer service and says, show me where the Fig Newtons are. I said, well, they're in aisle number five. And I was sitting there doing a Western Union. I said, show me where the Fig Newtons are. And I very calmly replied, I can't leave this this post right now because I'm doing a Western Union. I would be more than happy to take you over. Shut up. Show me where the Fig Newtons are. So I called somebody up. But, but it's like, wow. It's a... Uh, I understand customer service, but this isn't a full service gas station. All right, so so you have no idea what I'm getting ready to ask you. Oh, uh, God. So you just dealt with a mother and a child, right? Yeah. yeah. How old do you think that kid was? Uh, I'm going to go nine years old. Nine years old. So why did you take a lottery slip from a nine year old kid? Because the mother was there. She was teaching him. She's, they've been in here before. And uh, she's teaching him uh, the way of the world by using the card, by using the right buttons. Transition walk, day number three out of four. You know, I come from the world of radio, where the only people I had to deal with 
were my co-workers and this imaginary world where I assumed that listeners were out there. So to be in CS, it puts real people in front of me. My God, their stress becomes my stress. Their reasons for wanting to steal things endlessly or bring things back that really don't need to be brought back. You know, it just adds more anxiety. That's the reason why I'm on a transition walk. I'm transitioning. I'm getting to know who I am on the inside while strengthening up the ability to create solutions. It's not easy, man. You know me, I like to buck the system. I don't like playing by the rules. Okay. So I was, I actually was going to come in and say, I'm not wearing a, uh, a name tag today. What? Uh, but yeah, I'm on the edge, you know? And so, uh, and I, and I, and I thought, okay, you know, I've never asked the question, why do we wear a name tag? Now you've been a manager and you are a manager. What, what do you think is the real reason why we wear uh, name tags? There's two, there's two reasons. In my professional opinion, it's so we can identify if a customer has an issue with an, an associate. Ding, 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 ding. Okay. And there's another reason. There's another reason. Uh, so that associate, this associate interaction is more more friendly. Oh, that, see, that would be the third reason. Yeah. Okay. okay. So I, I read that in that same article. Yep. Okay. Yep. I, I'm lost. What safety? In regards to safety, that what happens is, is that it, if if something were to happen to you, they would identify you immediately by oh. name. So through safety. My favorite treat here at the grocery store, literally, is rhubarb. And I think what it is, is a kickback to my childhood in the way that we used to raid gardens as kids. And we'd walk in there and just start chopping away at it and just eat the rhubarb late into the night. So to have rhubarb here at the grocery store every day, every day, and then to find out that, you know, it's something that's really good for you every day, even more. And says, why are you standing here? And, and directs it to him. And I'm, I'm looking at I him like, like that's what people that's, that's what people that's what customers do too. It's like they'll they'll come in and and, and have a problem and they want to direct it to me. It's like why? Like I don't I'm, get it. Because I'm security, I'm supposed to be able to handle everything. No one ever do that. Like and and of all the battles to pick, yeah, I, I'm still shocked that he we, that. Do we need to watch him then tonight? I'm gonna go over there and say something to him here in a minute. And you need to you owe him an apology. At the, at the minimum. Yeah. yeah, at the minimum. Because he did nothing to him. He had no right to come in here and attack him like that. You yeah. know, or tell him. Trying to dictate where he stands yeah. and shit. Yeah. And I'm like, you just punch the damn clock and go to, you're already five minutes then, late. I mean, if, 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 if you did your job, you would see, I move all over the place. Especially when, if there's too many customers over there, I move over here. New guy Bill and I are in this conversation. It started actually yesterday and it continued today. A uh, um, a parent with their with their child came in with a lottery ticket. The child wanted to put the lottery ticket in the machine. Oh, and and so Bill came and and then the child put the ATM card in the machine and he comes out and he says, "I don't think that was legal." And and I said, "The parent was right there." And so he says, "No, I think I think really that you you can really I mean, like, trouble." Yeah. yeah. So to, yeah. so today in self checkout, a mother uh, was letting her daughter run the wine across yeah, the camp. And so and I looked right at this guy, Bill, and and said, Look, here's a situation. Um, you know, look, um the, 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 the mother's doing it there and the same thing. What what is the difference between the two? So I did research on that. What what do you think the answer is to that research? Oh it's probably like throw straight in jail under the prison. You think so? I, so you think it's illegal? I feel like that's what it is, but I'm personally not gonna bat an eye. I yeah. don't care less as long as I'm not seeing the kid drink or gamble. Yeah. Well I, I went to management over it and I and I said, Okay, who was illegal, who was not or who was illegal, who was not legal? And, and and as long as the parent is right there with you, you can do that. People always ask me, when you've got such a variety of food at a grocery store, what do you have for your lunch? And, you know, that's one of the toughest things to really answer because there is so much to choose from. But I don't have a can opener, so therefore that eliminates a lot of things. I can't go back and just cook a steak. So thank God we've got a deli. But the one thing I've been kind of addicted to lately is this. Uh, I've never done a Philly cheesesteak. So I go back there and have a CT steak sandwich. I don't put any, uh, you know, like cheese or anything like that on it. Just give me the meat. Give me the protein. That's all I want and I and I get a six inch sub but it's so freaking big I can only eat three inches of it transition walk day number four hey before I even get started here as we go into the forest I, I want to thank everybody who's responding some people have said um, I, I don't have the time to take a transition walk but I take a transition drive we love the idea that you speak of the realities of retail 
because a lot of us hide. We don't let others know what it's really like to be behind that register, to, to face people who are basically liars and cheaters. So thank you for the transition. And that's why we're going on a transition walk. Look at that caterpillar. Oh my God. You see amazing things out here in this forest. Things that take your mind off from, yeah, the weight of the public. Create the solution. You're in customer service. The new day starts off with sort of a continuation. Last night, a, a caller gave us a buzz and, and said, look, that shrimp, I bought some shrimp. It's horrible. I, you are, I, don't have, I have to bring it back. Well, you, you can bring it back. Do you want me to bring it to you? Well, yeah. What are we supposed to do? Put it in the freezer? Okay, that's what she was doing last night. She was she was being pretty rough on Bill. And uh, today she comes in and nice as all can be. I mean, I was expecting a big storm when, when she came in, but no, nice as all can be. And uh, Bill was like going, there's no way that was a safe person. One reason why you should never bring your kids to work, they tend to wander. And so the Coca-Cola lady uh, who's stocking our shelves is very busy doing exactly what she's supposed to be doing. But then the daughter wandered off and then the mother moved. Daughter got really, really scared that her mother left her behind. Very upset little girl. But we found her. Everything's cool. But man, sometimes you don't need to bring the kids to work. I recently did an interview on my podcast about the five different generations that are currently in control of, of this generation or in the building of a business. And one of the things that, uh, that we're having to deal with is a baby boomer and a Gen Xer, uh, you know, generation alpha. And what happens is, is that uh, nobody writes checks anymore. So when you go to a store and you write a check, they're not going to really accept it. You have to, you have to get certified. We had a guest come in, and that's exactly what happened. It wouldn't accept her $266 check. She exploded all over me. I mean, literally, you know, why would you treat me this way? I've been coming to this store for such and such amount of years. I tried to explain to her that I'm not the one that makes up the rules, that, that I'm going to do everything I humanly possibly can to get her back into a great mood. But uh, the goal at that point in time was was to do exactly that. And so, um, and here's here's where it kind of bit us both again, is that uh, so she, she had to go home and get her card. She comes. And, uh, and she yells at me again the second time at register number one. And then when she leaves the store, she goes, oh, I forgot to put my store card in. And I go, well, I'm, I'm going to pay you. Watch, watch the power that I've got. Uh, I'm, I'm going to make sure that you, you get that savings. And uh, she smiles and goes, you know what? I'm, I'm having a better day now. Middle-aged man, row seven. He's got uh, an overabundance of toilet paper, and it looks like paper towel. And I'm trying to see if he, how many uh, jugs of Tide or detergent is in there. Uh, this guy's going to be a runner. Um, we we need to really kind of start circling him and seeing if we can get some conversation going on. Um, prove me wrong, dude. Prove me wrong. Be a man. Be a man. Do not be a runner tonight. We have one CS agent on door number one. I'm on door number two, and our eyes are right on the guy. Uh, he's definitely making his way toward the door. Wait, wait. I, I, he, yeah, he's going toward door number one. I, sir? Sir? Oh, how do you, did, did you guys pick up on that? Get away from me. Get away from me. Sir? Sir? Did you pay for that? And there you have it, another fun-loving edition of CTCS. Boy, wouldn't it be great if I could just mic every single person that we come in contact with? Hmm. Maybe one day. (laughs) But anyway, hey, if you are in retail, keep doing what you're doing. You're connecting people to people to people to people. This is our community, CTCS.